All right, welcome back. This is a part two on how to switch from XP to Ubuntu Linux. You will need a piece of free software called Unet Bootin. It is available for Windows, for us for Linux, and for Mac OS. You can get more information about Ubuntu at ubuntu.com. And finally, if this is simply not for you and need to upgrade your Windows XP to another Windows machine, check out the Total OS Today Shop Marketplace. I will have some recommendations here for you. But first of all, make sure you have Unet Bootin installed. All right, well, I already have it installed and have it booted up here. This is it here on the top, Unet Bootin, and I will go through this as quickly and as simple as possible. You will have a couple of choices here. You can either click distribution or disk image. In part one, if you recall, if you've seen it, we already downloaded the trusty uh, TAR, which is the latest version of Ubuntu 14.04, the 32-bit version, which is trusty-desktop-i386. Now, after clicking, we got to put this down here. After clicking this image, you would click this here, okay, and it will bring up your file manager here. Here, now I've already uh, saved this onto my desktop, which I already clicked, and I'm going to highlight the trusty desktop file here click open now make sure that your computer reads your USB drive because we are going to create a USB bootable stick you have a choice of hard drive or USB drive make sure you highlight USB drive in my case it is drive G now from here all we gotta do is click OK now your your USB stick should be at least uh, four gigs, if not more. So from here, I will click OK. And this will go through the automatic process of extracting the files to create a USB bootable stick. Now, how to boot from a USB flash drive versus booting from a CD DVD drive, you will have to go into the BIOS and tell it you want to boot from a flash drive. Now this, the procedure can vary from computer to computer. In my particular computer, which is a uh, Lenovo, I reboot and I just tap enter a couple times. It'll boot into the BIOS to give me different options. Now in your computer, it can be the escape button. It could be maybe, oh, I think I recall F8, F10. That varies from computer to computer. If you are not sure, Find out, look up, find out what the make and model number of your Windows XP machine. Go to the appropriate vendor website. For example, let's say you have a Dell. You would just look up the support for your machine on the Dell website and look up how to boot into BIOS. From there, there should be a setting, a drop down menu to tell your computer to change what's called the boot order and how to boot from a USB stick. Again, in my situation, I have to tap the enter key. I got a feeling yours may be different. It might be escape, the F8, F10, F12. Again, it varies from computer to computer. So you will have to look that up first. Once you know how to do that, you would leave your USB bootable stick inside the USB drive on your desktop reboot into that stick and then go into the installation process. The installation process we will look into part three. For now this is part two on how to create a USB bootable stick using UNET Bootin. All right if you're going to install Ubuntu uh, I would recommend that your computer has at least one gigabyte of RAM. If it has less, it will install. Say if it has 512, I believe 512 megabytes of RAM is the minimum. It will run, but may not run as smoothly as expected. In that situation, if you have 512 megabytes of RAM or less, you can try something called Lubuntu. That's Ubuntu with an L or Zubuntu. That's Ubuntu with an X. Uh, you can search my channel for those type of Linux uh, operating systems. All right, this should be almost done here. It is fully automatic. All it's saying right now is extracting files. Please wait. So we shall wait. As far as upgrading your Windows PC, 
Uh, right now I am using Windows 7. I'm perfectly happy. I'm perfectly happy with it. <clears throat> Pardon me. I do use Windows 8 also. I think Windows 8 looks terrific. I think it's optimized for touchscreen. So if, if you're going to buy, if you are in the market of buying a Windows 8 PC, you may want to go with a touchscreen. It's not absolutely necessary, but it may make it easier for you. Okay, this is almost done. And after this is done, it should give me an option of what to do. Installing the bootloader. Okay, that's how simple it is. It says here, after rebooting, select the USB boot option in the BIOS boot menu. Reboot now. Well, I don't because I already have this installed as a dual boot on my Windows 7 PC. Now from here, if you had already selected the inside the BIOS on how to boot into the USB stick, you could of course click reboot now and your computer will boot into the bootable USB stick. It would actually boot into the operating system to install the system. And for that, we will leave that for part three. But that's it. That's how easy to, it is to create a, a USB bootable stick. This is just a program compatibility assistant. I will ignore that. That's how you do it. It's that simple. So make sure you take a look at part one. I will have links below in the show notes. All right, that's it for this one. Welcome aboard all of the new subscribers. Thank you for four years of Total OS today. And if you haven't already, please consider a small don donation to help maintain this channel. This channel was created for you, the beginners. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And as always, I will catch all of you sometime in the future.